Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson, and this is the place investors go to gain actionable advice, learn about current market trends, and hear war stories from other professional investors out there in the field today. Before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping items for you. First, if you like this episode, we would very much appreciate a like, subscribe, and share. It is the best way to support the show and keep it running far into the future. Second, if you're a new investor looking to get started in real estate or an experienced investor looking to take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you that will cover how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance those deals with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. On top of that, I throw in an insane amount of free bonuses that you'll have access to once you buy the ebook. All I charge is our admin costs to keep this show running. So if you're serious about real estate investing and want to create both active and passive income as an investor, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com and click on the button that says, get the ebook in the upper right-hand corner to grab yourself a copy. With that said, let's dive right in. Today, we have a very special guest with us, ready to drop some investor knowledge on you. So buckle up, grab your pen and paper, and enjoy the ride. All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today, we have Lior Rosansky with us all the way over from Baltimore. No, Boston, right, Lior? Boston. That's I'm getting it. all these things mixed up, man. West Coast people, we don't know our East Coast. But uh, Lior is from Floral Capital LLC. He is a master at multifamily. Um, so I'm super excited to have him on here. Lior, thank you very much for hopping on. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, we, we definitely don't associate with Baltimore down here. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing we got that correct. <laughs> that was, that was a no, no, that was my bad. Yeah, it's all good. All right. Well, hey, I told you before we got on here, we like to start with stories. We like to hear how people got to where they are today. Um, I'm sure you got a good one. So why don't you dive into it? Where did you uh, or how did you get started in real estate in the first place? Yeah, so for me, it kind of started with a classic immigrant story. You know, we moved here to the States um, when I was like eight, nine from Israel. Um, uh -huh. You know, parents parents wanted me to be a doctor, a lawyer. Um, <laughs> that was kind of uh, drilled into my head, uh, basically from right from the get-go. You know, that's, that's really the only way to be successful, right? Um, so I ended up going, doing pre-med in uh, university here. Um, I actually took the MCAT. Um, was gonna and basically decided to take like a gap year job before applying to med schools. Um, so I actually ended up taking a uh, role in a management consulting firm. Um, you know, and that's there. I kind of worked brutal hours, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70 hour weeks. Um, just, you know, I, I kind of saw what it's like in corporate, right? Where you're just slaying away at hours, but you don't really have time to like, think what you're going to do for yourself, right? I mean, you're just always so busy, either traveling or doing work, um, you know, so I, I, I you know, I, I try to give myself some time to like figure that out, did some, you know, I, I took some time, try to do some research on other wealth things that I could do for myself, right? Um, you know, so I played around on the stock market, stuff like that, but I quickly realized I wasn't going to be the next Warren Buffett, like very quickly. Um, right there with you, and, man. uh, yeah, right. Like most of us, we, we I feel like we have that epiphany. Um, <laughs> and and I, what was funny was, um, you know, I had two buddies at the time that uh, were uh, in the construction industry and they were talking about buying a place, right? Or buying a, a piece of property. And I was like, well, you know what? I mean, maybe real estate could make sense, right? I mean, you know, I've got another year before I go to med school. Maybe I'll just buy something and see how that goes. Um, so I decided to buy, right? I, I, I really knew nothing, didn't know anything about um, business, real estate. I mean, I, I, you know, I understood the basic concept, like, Hey, I can buy something. It can maybe produce some income. Um, you know, I really like the Boston market. I understood it was a growing market. Um, so I was like, Hey, why don't I just dive into this? So bought my first property. Um, and then from there, you know, uh, as soon as I closed, I thought I was an absolute genius. Right. So <laughs> I, uh, decided to jump into the development game. Um, as I was kind of exiting the corporate space, decided not to apply to med school. I thought I was going to make billion dollars developing property. Um, and again, quickly realized that's not the case, right? I mean, you know, what I, what I quickly saw was it's very similar to corporate, right? You're basically trading your time for money. 
Um, it's just as stressful, just the same 50, 60, 70 hour weeks. Um, you know, it, you don't really have a lot of time to do other things. And, um, you know, as soon as I got out of those projects, there were great learning lessons. Um, I really narrowed down and understood like, look, multifamily um, and, and buying rental property was the way to go, right? It's something that's scalable, something that allows you to build income on the side um, and build your wealth at the same time. So that's, that's kind of how I, I kind of got into the multifamily trajectory. Cool, man. Your, uh, your story kind of mirrors mine um, quite a bit. I was in management consulting too. And I was just like, man, these hours are brutal. So I got to figure out a way out. Um, but it sounds like, uh, you know, you were, you're, you're an immigrant family. So you guys are, I'm sh- everybody who's an immigrant, you know, they have such good work ethics. And so I'm sure that really helped you along um, in your journey in real estate. When you decided to get into real estate, what was that first property that you bought? What kind of real, uh, what kind of property was it? Yeah. So it was a, it was a three family around Boston. Um, okay. you know, and I tell, even today I still buy those cause a lot of the bulk of Boston's inventory, you know, it's a very old town. We don't have huge apartment buildings here. Like you might have in like the South or Southwest or Midwest. Right. Uh, you know, a, a 20 unit building here is like, like a huge building. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so I bought a three unit building. Um, and again, kind of from the beginning, my rationale for the, the purchase was, look, I want to buy in a growing area. Like I didn't understand much, but I understood that because I knew that if I bought in a place where there's going to be demand today, where there's going to be demand in the future, where I could see there was growth through infrastructure and development, you know, I saw it as like a hard to lose proposition. So that's kind of what made me pull the trigger on it. Absolutely. Growing in with a population, positive net migration. That's what you need to look for. Obviously, even shrinking cities, you can make good deals. Detroit, I'm sure there's still good good deals to be had. But the one key you want in real estate is positive net migration. Um, All right. So you got that three unit. And then from there, you jump straight into development. That is something that I don't often hear. Why did you decide that development was the next step for you? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I bought that first property kind of looking at the numbers and, you know, the cash flows. And I thought, well, you know, I can look at numbers and development deal and it'll be just as easy, right? So um, I pencil out, you know, I'm a numbers guy, I pencil out the numbers. And I was like, wow, like you can make a ton of money. Why don't we just do that? And again, quickly realized that's not the case. I mean, development is a whole Rough. nother ball game, <laughs> completely different ball game, right? Um, you know, and it's, it's the same thing, right? I mean, it's lucrative, but you're directly trading your time for it. I mean, you have to be on site every day. Um, you know, you're not creating that additional, uh, income streams, right? So it, it didn't really solve a lot of the issues that I originally had when I was in kind of as a, you know, in corporate America. So yeah. that's, that's kind of why I decided to move away from it. You were looking for cash flow, not lumps of cash. I was looking for cash flow. I, I, you know, I think I was looking for two things. I was looking for something that would help me build wealth in the future, right? I mm-hmm. think that was actually priority number one for me. Um, you know, and like I said, I, I didn't, I don't like investing in the stock market. Um, I didn't really believe in my four hundred one k, so I needed a vehicle that I could sit on over a long period of time that I truly believe believed in, right? And obviously, the more I studied real estate, the more I kind of understood the value of it. So. Actually, it was really that wealth generation was number one. And then the second was, you know, having that additional income stream was, of course, also, uh, you know, fantastic. Yep. So since then, since, uh, you know, your foray into development, you have gone into syndications, um, which is something that's actually I'm just getting into now. Every deal I've done up to this point, I've only had one or two uh, investors with me, but now um, we decided to open it up to other people. And so this is a new, new world for me. How did you decide to get into syndications and what was the, uh, kind of the process that you went through for that first one? Yeah. So what I basically did from there was, um, you know, again, I, I understood that I didn't know everything in the, in the business. So I, uh, ended up partnering actually with, uh, my broker at the time I got licensed. Um, and my broker at the time was starting to buy up a lot of multifamilies around the Boston area. And I kind of just found a way to provide value to his operation and essentially was started helping build it out. Right. So uh, we were able to raise money. I mean, you know, we were buying small multifamily, so it's not like we were raising money from like 15 different people um, for these deals. Most of the times we had anywhere from three to six or seven investors per deal. Um, That was kind of our average. 
Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the step we took on. Um, you know, I kind of helped a, a lot with the raises of the money, with the financial analysis. I kind of, that, that was kind of the value I was able to provide. And uh, together we were able to kind of hit the pedal and really scale out and uh, buy quite a bit of buildings over the last, you know, over three, four years or so. Nice. I love it. And you guys are strictly focused on the Boston area, right? Yeah. I mean, even today I'm strictly focused on Boston. I mean, you know, I, I have plans of potentially expanding into the South, Southeast in the future. I think the, my rationale today is I really want to build out a high quality shop first in Boston mm -hmm. um, and really nail down like the structure, the number of people, the types of people, the systems, the processes, right? That's all we're, that's all in development today. And once I really nail down that, then I'll kind of feel comfortable maybe expanding into one other market, right? Because, you know, one of, one of the things I see a lot, I see a lot of syndicators do, which is good and bad is, you know, they can, they own product over five, six different states, right? And that's great from a diversification perspective, but, you know, we all kind of know that in real estate, it's neighborhood by neighborhood. And a lot of times it's street by street, right? I mean, Boston, like, you, you, you buy a building on the wrong street, you're going to lose a lot of money, right? So it, it's really getting to know and becoming an expert in one marketplace. Um, so that's why I've really prioritized building it out here. I'm also a huge believer in Boston. You know, it's a class A market. I think it's going to be here in the future. It's super resilient. Um, so that's why I want to build everything out here. And then, you know, in the future, I can kind of evaluate the opportunity of potentially going down south. Yep. I love it. Yeah. Building the systems is definitely, that's where you really start to see the returns and the, and the security is just mastering a specific market, getting your team up, up and running and, uh, and working, you know, well-oiled machine. What are the, um, what are the, the main roles that you feel have really contributed to your business to allow to be automated and expand, um, within the Boston area? Yeah. I, I mean, I'd say, um, from an operational perspective, um, some of the things that I've, you know, some of the roles I've hired in the past and I'm hiring again, um, has been construction, right? So a lot of my, um, a lot of my deals are either light or heavy value add, um, you know, in Boston, it's, it's different than a lot of other markets in the, across the country, right? Yeah, I mean, the houses are built they, in 1700, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you're dealing <laughs> with old inventory, um, our construction prices are also significantly different, right? Like I, I talk to syndicators in the South or telling me they're doing value add and they do it like 10, 15 grand a door. Um, you know, and I joke with people here, I can't even get out of trash guy for 10 grand, right? So, <laughs> um, you know, my average construction budgets here are probably like 50 to $100,000 per unit. Um, so we're doing a significant amount of work, right? I mean, we're, we're really, um, my philosophy, especially over the last, I'd say 12 to 24 months has been to create standout product in, a, in standout locations. Um, so we do heavy work, really create strong product that can often compete for top dollar rents. Um, you know, it's obviously not brand new construction or anything like that. So I'm not competing with the developers, but in terms of existing product, like it is, you know, I'm trying to build out some of the top line um, inventory to really stand out. And are you guys buying in kind of workforce housing areas or are you doing more of the top end um, luxury ish units? Yeah, that's something that's also shifted over the last 12, 24 months. I'd say when we first started for three, four years, probably, you know, we were kind of looking at, I would call them class C, um, maybe lower class B locations around Boston. Um, don't get me wrong. I was still very high and still am very high in a lot of these places. I mean, they're changing every day. Um, but they were certainly, you know, they were certainly kind of the lower end in terms of locations. Um, and then the last 12, 24 months, I mean, we've really, uh, I've really been conscious about trying to buy in better locations. So high class B and even class A locations today, um, you know, cause I really want to position, I, I really want to play and, um, and own inventory in just standout locations. Right. Um, you know, my pitch to all my, uh, capital investors, every time I go on a deal is look, Obviously, we can exit a deal in three or five years, but every time I, every time I buy an asset, I want to. I look at it from the perspective: of what happens if we have to own this for 10, 15, 20 years? Right? Is this a building that we're, is going to continue to command demand um, well into the future? Right? So, I would rather pay up, buy in just the strongest possible locations. You know, some of the buildings I buy today 
are within like a mile of like Harvard, right? Like Harvard University or MIT, um, you know, and it's like th those places are not going anywhere. So I feel very, very good that, you know, these these kinds of locations are just going to be resilient um, no matter what happens in the economy. Yep, absolutely. Location is the number one thing. And I actually had to learn the hard way that um, you really do need to know the, the the specific metro that you're dealing with, because as you said, every single street, it can change very quickly. Um, and even if a, a larger metro, you know, the, the city has good metrics, you know, high, low, low unemployment, um, positive net migration, all that stuff. If you buy on the wrong street, you might be buying a bad deal. So you definitely need to know specifics. All right. I just took a peek at the clock. Does look like we've gone through our 15 minutes. So it's time to jump into the quick question round. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Starts with books. I'm a big bookie. So give me two recommendations, one for general life wisdom, one for real estate specific. Uh, ooh, I like that. So real, real estate specific. Uh, I actually just finished up um, the e-myth for real estate investors. Oh, um, re I really like that one. Um, I really like that one. I thought that was, it provided a lot of value, especially for, uh, you know, if you're kind of in the midst of like hiring um, or anything like that, that was, a, I would strongly urge people to read that. Um, it kind of reinforced for me, like the, the way to build the systems and processes. So that was great. And then um, in terms of life with them, oof, that's, well, since I've been asked that, I would actually go with um, McCon uh, Matthew McConaughey's book. Um, oh, nice. Green uh, light. Yeah, Green Light. There you oh, go. Green Light. Uh, a really good book. I mean, just like the, you would never think about it, but like the experiences he's had um, and the way he was able to kind of transform, you know, kind of go through these different um, experiences is just an, it's an unbelievable story. Um, and really, I actually took a, quite a bit of like life lessons away from that. So it's a really great read. Dude, Matthew McConaughey for president. Let's see that. Yeah, <laughs> he's got my vote. <laughs> All right, moving on. This next question is for your younger self. If you could go back to the Lior who is just getting started in real estate, let's say he was just working in that management consulting firm, looking at that first deal, go to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Okay. Whoop, I, you cut out there, so say it one more time. Oh, I said scale quicker. Scale uh, quicker. Yeah, I, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I spent the first three years, three, four years, we did good. We bought a fair amount of buildings, um, but oftentimes it was just me and my partner, maybe one other person here or there. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I can see it today, right? If I was able to stick the right team behind what we were doing, I mean, you know, I could have quadrupled or even more this business, right? So scale quicker, bring on people more quicker. Um, I, I think that's the key. Absolutely. And I've said this before, there's actually safety in size. I know it's so tempting to think that that $100,000 property, you know, you, you're exposing yourself less, but you also have a smaller cash flow. And that is what keeps your, keeps your building safe, keeps your business safe, is being able to dip into that cash flow when things go wrong. So the smaller properties, they are not as, uh, it's not the place to start. You want to scale quicker. You want to go bigger just like Lior said, um, love that. So moving on to the next question. This one is the United States. It's a big place, a lot of opportunity out there. Give me one Metro that you are most excited in investing in today. I got to stick with Boston, man. I, Boston. you know, I, I, you know, it's uh, kind of, like I said, it's, I, I really want to invest in, in the best markets, right? I, uh, I'm a big believer in not chasing cash flow, right? I know, I know a lot of, uh, operators and investors, look for that. And sometimes I think it takes them to questionable areas or markets. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I really want to play a long-term wealth and equity game. So for me, it's how can I invest into the best possible markets in the U S um, honestly, my biggest regret in COVID was that I didn't go buy real estate in New York City. Right. So um, if I can expand into New York city, I would do that too. Um, but, you know, buying an established market, Boston, New York's, the LA's of the world, um, you know, there's, there's a reason people pay up for those properties there. Absolutely. All right. This next one is your Superman strength. We are all gifted with strengths that we uniquely can give this world. So what is your Superman strength? Uh, what are you good at? Oh, that's a good question too. Uh, I, you know, I would say probably my, you know, this is going to sound a little funny, but 
I can take it to the chin really well over and over again. That's <laughs> that's probably my number one thing, you know. Hey man, there's I'll some boxers this, right? and that's just what they're good at is getting hit. So I understand it. It's, it look, I mean, every I feel like every day I see like a new, you know, a new curveball or something that I didn't expect it and see. And just being able to work through that, being able to figure out, okay, like assess the situation, figure it out, you know, take the hit how do I recover? Where do I need to go next? Right. I mean, I think it's in any business, right. It's not obviously not only real estate, but it's such a critical skill. Um, and honestly, I'd say that's probably one of my best things, right? Like, I think that's one of the, one of the things that's helped me grow at this pace I have, because, you know, things happen, life happens, crap happens. And, um, you know, I can just roll right through it and keep on going. So. And the thing about shit hitting the fan is it's never, it never happens where you think it's going to happen. It always comes out never. of the work and you're just like, wow, did not expect that. So that is definitely, it, a, it, yeah. definitely it, it a never, strength. It never happens how you think or where you think, like it's always going to surprise you. And that's what you, you got to be resilient. It's like, it's, it's key. Absolutely. All right, moving on. None of us are islands. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. So what is a, who is a mentor that who has contributed to your career and uh, how they moved you along? That's a good question. You know, I, I, I don't think I would say I have one mentor necessarily. Um, you know, I, what I do is I like to study up from the biggest investors, uh, past and present, um, and kind of really try to figure out what they're doing. Right. So, you know, and, and that's kind of actually one of the reasons why I felt very comfortable investing in a quote unquote expensive market, right? Like Boston, because I've, I've I saw, you know, that a lot of the wealthiest people, they not only invested in real estate, but they own real estate in cities like New York, Boston, LA, right? Um, it's not like they're necessarily buying houses like, you know, like you said, like Detroit, right? Or anything like that. Obviously, uh, you know, BlackRock and Blackstone, they might have other uh, philosophies on that and they're acting on it. But in general, that's, um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of what I've, that's kind of what I've studied and learned um, and really try to mimic that in my own investing philosophy, right? Like, how do I, how do I buy the best, uh, the best quality assets in the best possible locations? Right? And I, you know, I picked it up from many different people. Yep, absolutely. All right, that moves us on to the very last question. This is for the listeners. You've given us a lot of good advice. I'm sure people want to reach out and say hi. What is the best way for them to do that? Yeah, I'm very active on uh, Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, feel free to DM, DM me, hit me up on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, I'm very active. So yeah, please DM me and I'll do my best to help out. All right. And I will put those links in the show notes for LinkedIn and Instagram. So if you guys want to reach out to Lior, just click a little more in the description. It'll pull down the full description and in there you can find the links. So that wraps it up. I appreciate you hopping on the show. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. Absolutely. And for everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe with Real Estate Investing Club.com. Other than that, hope you guys end up having an absolutely fantastic week. Keep rocking real estate, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on, and we're able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level. I've created an ebook just for you available on our website. This ebook, ebook will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance a deal with little to no money down and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. The first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. 
And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we used to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. After that is the investors quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot of uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesalers template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. <laughs>